Okay, so at what point did you join the N1 tour? Hmm, I, I don't know exact year. When I joined the N1 tour, I want to say it was, uh, I don't know if it's 99 or 2000. I want to say 2000. It could be, give or take. So I want to say, I, don't, I, I want to say it was 2000. If I'm off by, I can only be off by either 99 or 2001, but let's say, let's say about 2000, I joined the N1 tour. And, um, the N1 team at that time consists of guys I played with or against uh, in Rucker Park or different tournaments throughout New York City, with the exception of maybe one or two or three players that they that they picked up along the way on the tour. You know, so what what, what they used to do is go to every city and have an open run a couple of days before the actual game that we were going to have in that city. And if the open run, if we, if we come to LA and we have open run and we like one or two guys, we'll put them on the tour. We'll put them, they'll join the tour with us. And, you know, so I, I ended up joining the tour that's, that's summer. I want to say 2000. Okay. And, and the, the Skip to My Lou name, did that come from the N1 tour? Or no, did you have that Skip to My Lou. I got Skip to My Lou when I was 15 years old in, the, in, Rucker, ah. in Rucker Park. Uh-huh. Yeah. So okay. I got fit. So and that, I, my high school coach, Ronald Clara, took me out to Rucker Park when I was 14. And he put me on the team. And he, like, I, so these are grown men. These are like high school Americans, college, and some guys playing overseas. So I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get them playing time with these guys. These guys are phenomenal. You know, these guys I've, I've watched in, in, during their high school days. Some of these guys in college, I watched them on TV. So one day, um, he, we have a game. He takes me up there. I um actually I meet him up there <laughs> and and we only have like seven guys. So now I'm like, oh snap, I gotta play today. And when I went in that game, man, I had no fear. I'm just weaving through the weaving through the defense, throwing passes, and I'm the crowd is getting off their feet, and I'm like, uh oh, I'm doing something out here with all these with these grown ups, this you know, you know, because this is like a pro am league. This is the this is the creme de la creme of summer summer Thomas in New York City. And they was calling me the Energizer. They were, so the, the guy in the mic, the, they were Tango, his name was Tango, Duke Tango and Al Cash. They, they, they were doing the uh, play-by-play on the microphone. And they was like, uh-oh, here comes the Energizer because he keeps going, he keeps going. So I'm like, oh, stop. They gave me a nickname. So I, I come back the next time and everybody's like, man, we want to see the Energizer get in. And, you know, and so now all these guys are back from wherever they were at playing, now, now the team is back. Not it's not seven of us; it's, it's full. And now the people are like, man, we want to see the energy. So now the only time I was going to get in, so we up by twenty. It was down big, so they'll put me in. I do my thing. The very next summer, I'm fifteen. It's all about me now. These guys are nowhere to be around. So now I'm there every day. And one day I just it was a, the other team was shooting a free throw, and I was like, well, what could I do to get these people off their feet again? What, what could I do? And I thought of something right on the spot. I said, if I get on the two on one, three on one fast break, I'm saying this in my summer head, I'm gonna let the ball bounce beside me. I'm gonna start skipping and I'm gonna see if this guy go for that ball. And if he go for that ball, I'm gonna wrap that thing around and throw a no look to my teammate for the finish. And it just happened true to form. It just happened the way I just thought about it right there on the spot. I got the outlet, pushed the ball to the middle court. I got two guys filling the lane and the one defender's back that's three on one. I just start skipping. And he went for the ball. I threw it to my team. And he caught it in stride and just dunked it. Boom. And everybody just ran the floor on the court. And the guy, Al Cash, dude, says, like, ladies and gentlemen, we have a whole new nickname for him. We get that skip to my loop. That's the skipper. And that and everybody's on the court. They like grabbing me. I'm like, I don't, I just did a regular, I thought it was a silly, dumb move. I just did, I thought, I thought of something to get him to go, yeah, you know, you know, get the crowd roaring. I had no idea that this nickname was going to be my name for the rest of my life. And this is going to be so legendary. And, and this was going to carry me through my journey in basketball, man. But it was phenomenal. It was some phenomenal times. So I ended up playing Rucker 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. A couple of times when I was playing the NBA. Then I just stopped. I forgot what point I just stopped playing. And but till this day, man, Skip to my Lou is my nickname. And a lot of people don't even know my real name. They know me as Skip. <laughs> they think my mother named me Skip. <laughs> there you have it. Okay, so so you're doing the and one mixtape tournament, and you're basically going city to city and humiliating whoever the locals are, right? <laughs> in right, that city. right. I mean, was there ever like, I mean, I mean, you're you're hurting pe- people's feelings in the process. You know, these guys probably were the shit in their city until right. you guys showed up and and just 
destroyed them. I mean, was there ever any fights, any bad feelings, shootings, anything of that sort? No, nah, you know what? It's but at this point when the N one tour was coming to these people's city, and you're right, some of these guys that was in that park, that's their park. Like they the man in them park. They already know what's to come. They already know what's coming when we get there. So it's to be expected. You understand what I'm saying? So if we if somebody come down and shake and hit you with the head with the ball, you already know that was coming because you know that's what we were coming to do. Um I I think what surprised what really got under people's skin, but it still wasn't no fights and nothing like that, is that they didn't realize that a lot of us, um, a lot of the other guys that were on the tour that had these nicknames and stuff, they didn't realize how that they could play some real legit basketball. They thought it was just all f- tricks and all this stuff, put it under your shirt, roll on the ground, wrap it around your head, hit you in the head. They thought it was all that until you know, a couple of there was a couple of cities we went to like Chicago, Philly, different play we went to, and they were like, "Well, let's play a real game." And then we when we gave them a real game, they were shocked that oh they could, they really can get down out here, you know, because there's a quite a few of the guys that you know, on that and one tour. A lot of them played college ball. Well, they were the man in their high school teams. <laughs> you know, some of us are like one of my guy, um, he's from California. His name is Sick With It on the N1 tour. His name is Sick With It. He's from Pasadena. Him and I played against each other when I went to Ventura Junior College. We ended up linking, linking back up some way, somehow on the N1 tour. But no one knew that him and I were one of the top guards in California Junior College. And, and him and I, actually, my junior college, we beat his team to go to the state finals. We beat, I beat his, we beat his team. Uh, and him and I both were being recruited high. We were both being recruited by Jerry Charkanian to come to go to uh, Fresno State. 